Hey everybody, it's David Bob from Outside Our Bubble and uh, I'm coming to you today with something you don't think about but you might run into because we did when we got to Texas. And that is your inverter shutting off due to overheating. A lot of people don't know this, I didn't know this, but these fans that are inside your inverter have a five year lifespan. And after they burn out and stop working, guess what? Your inverter will overheat when you're drawing too much power. And it started happening when we got down here to Texas and we were using power all the time and the inverter was on and things like that. And uh, we would lose power to the coach and it wouldn't be the breaker, it would be the inverter going off due to high temperature. So I'm like, that was really strange. And I'm looking at my meters and I'm like, yeah, it's 176 degrees that the, it was reading inside of the, uh, inside of the, um, the inverter. So it was tripping the inverter to turn off, um, charging cycle, everything, the whole thing. So we had to replace these fans and I figured while I'm replacing them, I might as well show you and talk to you a little bit more about it. So if you ever do, um, on your console inside, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, temperature area you can go into to look at the temperatures to see how hot they are. They should never really go over 170 something degrees. <laughs> but they did and that's why they stopped and I'll show you that. So I have two brand new fans. A couple things you need to know. I got everything pulled apart because these are the bays I need to get into. The, the end bay over there is where Brenda's going to be so she can look through to me working on the inverter which is in this bay. What I wanted to do here with the battery bay is to point something out. Of course, you don't want to have any power going to the inverter when you're working on it. They're very powerful. They're very strong. You want to have no energy there. You don't want to get shocked, of course. So you want to make sure you remove all the power to the inverter. The problem, however, is in, at least in our coach, the Tiffin 2014, right here is the battery cutoff. This is the house battery cutoff. If I was to turn this off, guess what? My inverter is still on. That fan right there is still running because that's how I was cooling the inverter before. The power's still on because this line up here, that's going to the inverter. So that this line comes up from the battery bank, comes to this fuse bus. This fuse bus goes down to the house. But over here, this goes to the inverter. So turning this off does not kill the power to the inverter. I don't know why it would be like that because you have no way to do that other than physically removing the power line itself which is the first thing I'm going to do before I pull the inverter apart. So just a heads up that turning this off does not kill the power to the inverter. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come on to here and this is where the inverter is. First thing we're going to do is we're going to turn off the inverter manually. So I just pushed this button right there. The inverter is now off. This fan which I was using for cooling the inverter before is not running so I know there's no power going through the inverter. However, there's still power here. So this is the line that's coming from over there where I showed you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the power from this. Okay, now be really careful. This is live, you know, this is live 12 volt power with a lot of amperage behind it. So um, I got my little rubber gloves here. Um, put my fans out of the way and then get my nifty 13 millimeter wrench and then remove this line. Now be careful because this will spark if you touch it back and forth. So I'm holding the line tight as I take the nut off and then I'm pulling. Get that out of the way. Make sure it does not touch against anything that can be ground. Chassis, anything like it, anything at all. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the casing from the inverter. There's a number of screws. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six main screws. And then there's a little screw right here that you have to get off. So this panel will drop right down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, I already removed most of the screws, just so you know. But... Uh, to, to save time, but I'll take the last ones out and then we'll get the inverter off, the inverter cover off. So Brent, if you want to shift sides, you can do that now. Hi everybody, I'm over here. So now we got no power going in the inverter. We killed, the, we killed the power. And um, now I need to get this case off. Why that's not, not uh, oh wrong screw bit. Oops. 
yeah, by the way, yeah, these are, <laughs> duh. I love when I screw up on doing something. Uh, these are tor torque screws. Um, these are torque screws, so make sure you use the proper thing. Then this will come right down. And this is that little, uh, this is the little doohickey right here that, uh, that, that where the screw comes out of. Um, I happened to hit that and I bent that a little bit. Any case, so what we're trying to get to right now, and it's a different torch, it's a different, it's a smaller bit that I have to use to get the, to the fans. These are the fans. The fans are right here. They're all the way back here and they're held on by a strap and they're powered, where are they powered? Um, they're powered over here. So they're powered on this side and there's two fans and they have to go up inside to get the fan removed. So that means ugh, getting inside your rig. This is, is because I don't want to take the, uh, I don't want to take the entire inverter out to do this. Hopefully I won't have to. Safety glasses on for protection in case you drop anything in your eyes. Again, don't want to uh, touch anything if you don't have to. Make sure you know where you're going and make sure you have the right torsion bit, which I hope I do. I may not. Uh. I do! Yay! Just had to hit it right. There it is. There's that little screw. I'm going to leave that right there. Ugh. Okay, so here's the fans. Gonna unplug them over here. Fan one, fan two. And then this strap. Oh, there's another one over here. Lovely. It was hidden behind the other fan. Well, that does. That's not. That sucks. I don't really make this that easy. Oh, you gotta cut that lead right there. Get my little knifey here. There we go. And then I can pull the fans out. Now the fans, it's important to note the direction. And they have the labels going toward the transformer. The labels are going toward that big sucker right there. And this fan, you can see, it still spins, but it doesn't continue to spin. It just, just kind of stops, okay? This fan, totally melted. Can't spin it at all. Totally heated up after it died, and over time it just warped it. So this one is totally dead. Okay, so now I gotta put the new fans in. Again, label goes toward the transformer. So now I just gotta get those in there. Make sure you have the leads going upwards so you can secure them and make make them reach to the um, power for the for the fans. Most people won't feel comfortable doing this, um, but I figured I would show that it's possible to do it yourself if you get into a bind. Okay, make sure I got the new fans, because <laughs> there's a, there's one of the old ones right here. Almost that would really suck putting the old one back in, wouldn't it? Okay, this is how they should spin, by the way. They should spin nice and freely like this. See? Okay, so again, going up, putting the secondary fan in. Again, making sure which I just didn't turn the label. Needs to be toward the transformer, that big block. And then that band will secure these in place once you get them in line. Like I said, once you get them in line. Ugh. 
wish they would have made this a little easier to get to. I gotta remember, I gotta be able to get back up into there and get that screw in. Ugh. There we go. Okay, so there we go, fan one, fan two. And will I be able to reach that hole now? I think so. I'm not in a very comfortable position. Ugh. I'm looking right now just to make sure I can find that hole I gotta line up. I'm pretty sure I can. But I gotta make sure the fans now are in the right place placement because there's a groove up on the top. And that hole, this band is a pretty tight band, um, which makes putting it back together a lot more difficult. And of course, it's gonna hang when I do this. So I'm glad it's a torque screw on this particular part because it'll help hold the bit in place as I try to line this thing up, which I know I'm not gonna do very well because I'm shaking too much. Oh, wait, maybe it will. I got it! Yay! Okay, before I put it all the way in, though, <laughs> this one fan is in that right position. I got it in the hole. I just got the, the fan. just needs to snap over a little bit. Come on. There we go. You too. There we go. I think I got it. Yeah. There. Got it. Okay. Now I can finish tightening that screw down. Here we go. Two fans in. Checking them. Make sure they both spin freely, which they do. Now I can hook the power to the fans back up. Don't worry about which one goes to which. I don't believe there's fan one and fan two and the fans aren't labeled themselves. Um, and, they, and the power connectors only go on one way. They have little uh, adapters on them that are only one way. Okay. Ugh. Okay, so they're both on now. Okay, so now we just need to take these, tuck these around here so they don't get caught up by the fan. And there is a little, uh, there's a little pull tie, which I have somewhere that it came with. Where did I put it? There it is. Thank you, Brenda. And put that through the fan hole. Uh, this is just so the, the lines don't get sucked into the fan at some point. That'd be bad. You'd be doing this all over again. So, we just tighten that down there, real easy-like. And wait, that way they don't get in the way of anything. Uh, there we go. Make sure the fans still are free spinning, which they are. And now we're going to add power back. Oh, dear. Get to stay right there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is when I touch, when I touch this, um, it's going to add power back to this. And it's probably going to spark when I do it. Just be aware it's going to happen. And um, if everything goes well, then the, 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 ult the, the inverter will automatically power up. And I should see those fans spin. So I don't know if you can see them or not, Brian, can you? No. No, okay. Um, here, let me grab that camera from you. Just kind of bring it right over here. There's what we're talking about right in there with the fans. Right back here, as you can see. And I'm gonna do this now. 
Watch the sparks. And the fans are spinning. See that? They spun up and then they spun down because they are not needed to be on right now. But they did spin. That's the best part. And that's what we wanted to see. So we can do that again for fun. Okay, no power. And now we're going to add power. And the fans are spinning and stopping. Okay. Here's Brenda. Hi. Okay. So now, um, what I'm going to do basically is just put this all back together again. And I will now have a working inverter once again that won't overheat because the fans will properly cool them as it needed. So all I'm going to do is we basically go backwards in what I did to take it all apart. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, this might help you if you get stuck somewhere because you can order the fans and get them two days to you. And um, this will help you. If you ever do have this problem and your fans have both stopped, you basically could look through here with a flashlight and see if they're spinning or not. And if they're not spinning, then you know that's a problem. Understand, they only come on when it needs to be cooled down. Um, but if you ever have a temperature overheat problem, uh, it, will, it will tell you on your panel and you can, you can see that. So then you can just look right through here with a flashlight, check it out, order the fans. And if you feel comfortable doing what I just did, then feel free and you'll know how to do it. And we'll be back in action. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, fix-it upper thingy. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get shocked. Well, yet. I'm not done. But just be careful and make sure you put everything back away the way it should be and tighten everything up the way it should be. And then finally add power back in to the coach after everything's put back on. And always remove power before you take it all apart. Okay? Hi, guys. Just want to show you I got everything back together nice and neat the way it should be. Um, the fans are running just fine and you can hear them maybe. Now those are veritable speed fans. They will speed up and slow down as needed to cool that. So sometimes they may be totally off, other times they may be on totally full blast depending on what the inverter is currently doing and the heat that it's producing. So just a heads up. I'm Dave Bob from Outsider Bubble. If you like what we do, please click subscribe. If you don't, it's okay too. We're just trying to help you where we can. Take care, keep safe, and Hopefully see you electrify down the road. Bye.